<laughs> it's been a cold one out here. It this has. Week, it? Chilly, chilly. How Chill do, to the bone. How do you keep warm um, on cold winter nights? Uh, layers of whale blubber. <laughs> yep. And yep. There are advantages. And I have a blankie. You have a blankie? I have a blankie I've had since I was a little child. Oh, isn't that special? And it warms me on cold winter nights. <laughs> Hello and welcome to your old news update. I'm Izzy Fitz. And that yeah. shivering guy over and there I'm is... shivering Bud Driscoll. Topping the headlines from yesteryear. Ding, ding, ding. ding. Yeah. Back to, back to 1961. Yeah, February 9th, 1961. Tin Hut. Members of the St. John's Military School Drill Squad will be introduced on the Ed Sullivan Show, Channel 12, 7 p.m. Sunday. Cool. Members of the quad squad will be leaving Schilling Air Force Base Friday morning for a series of appearances this weekend in the New York City area. Really big, big shoes. Well, I think so. I mean, you know, those guys, they know how to drill. That's right. And old Ed, what a guy. Maybe they'll meet Topo Chichio. <laughs> What's that? Um, okay, let's go to 75 years ago. We'll take the Wayback Machine to February 7th, 1936. Gerhard Siga. Siga, like I said. Siga? A native of Germany who has been making a lecture tour in the United States since 1934 will be in Salina Monday to address an assembly at Kansas Wesleyan University at 9.30 o'clock Monday morning on Hitler, Menace to Civilization and to speak at First Methodist Church at 8 o'clock Monday evening, using it as his topic, Dictatorship or Democracy. Now, this Man, the world, world should have listened to that old boy. You know, that was in 1936. That was before Hitler did most of his bad stuff. That's right. That's you know, right. Those who don't listen to history are doomed to repeat it. That's right. That's right. hundred years ago, February 11th, 1911, hmm. Mrs. Anna M. Minor, age 54, who went off and left her husband, husband Willis, age 68, mm. on April 28, 1910, after living with him less than a year, mm. has filed suit for divorce, seeking $4,000 in damages. That's a lot, 1911 money. That's right. Among other things, Mrs. Minor charges that her husband wore his underclothes so long that the odor became unbearable, oh and they, that he wouldn't clean his false teeth, Good and boy. that his language was coarse, in his habits indecent. I've heard that before. Oh, and yeah. he also kept reminding her of his former wife and her superior qualities. Yeah, that'll get you. Miner owns considerable property in Salina besides a little grocery at 442 South 10th. He, his, his wife was Mrs. Anna Schunk. Not Skunk. No, Shunk. Shunk. Oh, Shunk. Okay. He, yeah, he shunned Shunk. And the $4,000 damages is for the $12 a month pension, which she would have received the rest of her life if she had not married Minor. Yeah, despite her superior qualities, looks like that first wife probably got him for the, divorced him for the same reason. Yeah. Well, because the guy ought to just learn how to take a bath. The moral of this story is, you know, if you want to keep a wife, wear clean underwear. That's right. I don't know. February 11th, 1911. A.H. Grigg, principal of the Second Ward School, is charged by Tom Hawkins with giving excessive punishment to his son Claude, aged 10 years, last Thursday. The boy's father told Assistant Marshall Thompson, There he Marshall, goes again. Marshall Thompson, love that guy. Yep. That the principal struck the boy on the side of the head with a short rubber hose, which he keeps for the chastisement. Chastisement. Yeah, I knew that. Chastisement yeah. of unruly pupils and that the result was a cut on the side of the boy's head, which has proved quite painful. Oh, poor guy. Mr. Hawkins went to the police officers about the matter, but after a talk about the affair today, he decided not to bring charges. The boy attends school in the third grade, and Mrs. Nellie Brady is his teacher. Asked for a statement of the trouble this afternoon, Miss Brady said to the journal, This boy became unruly, and I slapped him on the hand with a ruler. He resisted punishment and struck me, and then I sent him to Mr. Grigg. The boy was in my room last year, and I have always had trouble with him. You know, spare the rubber hose, spoil the child. You think he learned something? Well, I think he learned to avoid rubber hoses. Yeah, he probably did. Read more about the way things used to be in the look back section of Monday's Salina Journal. And don't forget, in the cold, dress in layers. 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 That's the important word. Or blubber. And we'll see you, hopefully, in a warmer day yesterday.